morning folks um, it's about 654 in the morning Sunday morning um, again at the racetrack this is all the church I get you know so here I am with my guide to life and uh, the inspiration from above um, thinking about y'all at church um, we'll be home in time for the p.m. service and and I'll post a link to this video uh, so y'all can check it out because the message is, is for you. It's for everybody, but it's for you as well, mostly. Um, just got back from the showers. Uh, it's shortly in the next 10 minutes, this place will be bustling with activity. Right now, there's nobody out there, so it's nice and quiet. Um, time to, re to, to pray and reflect and, and seek the voice of God. Um, opened the book, asked God to give me a message, and um, this is what he gave me. Let me read it to you. It's Acts 26, uh, verse 1. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered him for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. And that was verse 3, so the first three verses. And uh, there's a lot of messaging right there from God in those first three verses. Um, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a messenger. I am an ambassador, and I try to... I try to do the best I can with this stuff. But uh, honestly, he's asking the king, answering for himself, for the things that were he was blamed for, or he's accused of. Folks, if this doesn't ring true to, to us, all one day being judged individually ourselves before the king, um, it, doesn't get any, it doesn't get any more black and white plain than that. And he asks the king to be patient, to listen patiently. And that, I think, is the key to this whole thing, which, which the Lord has, has told me. We need to be patient with one another, with our differences, our little minor differences in, in what we interpret or what we understand, what we believe. As long as we all know, as long as we believe in Christ and Him crucified, and you know what I'm talking about, that whole point we're all brothers and sisters. The little difference, there's no time to argue and fight and get into arguments and, and disagreements about this kind of stuff. We need to be patient with one another. We need to overlook some downfalls, some things that we don't agree with amongst each other. We also need to be patient with those who are still lost. I, time is short. Time is so very short, but we need to be patient also with them, also with the church, to an extent that I believe, in, like a lot of you do, that there is a, a big change coming, and um, a day of reckoning is coming, and people are going to have to choose. People who don't know, don't believe, don't care, never thought about it, are going to see, they're, they're going to see this evil, this, this wicked thing unveiled, and they're going to have to make a choice. They're going to have to choose this day which God they're going to serve, the God of this world or the God of the universe. And if they don't make a choice, they're still making a choice. If they decide that, you know what, it's not happening to me, I'll just look the other way. You know, these pedophilia and all these things that are going on that are so running rampant, rampantly right in our face these days, it seems like. Um, you're gonna, they're going to have to make a choice. And if they choose the light, then just as you and I, they're going to be changed. And I believe that day of reckoning is coming. And I believe with that day of reckoning is coming, going to come a great revival. I believe the falling away could very well be the people that choose the darkness or choose to look the other way. Or choose not to make a choice, which, you know, in turn they've already made a choice. And we need most, most importantly to be patient in our, our race, our weight upon the Lord. Paul says, 
to, to run the race and to finish the race strong. A race, man, I'm here, I am at the racetrack. It's not a two second thing. It's not a two minute thing. It's not a two lap thing. Um, it takes every bit of effort you got. Concentration right sharp, right to the very end. Every lap, every inch of every lap, all the time. Concentration, 100%. And it's no different with, with waiting on the Lord. Come Lord Jesus, yes, we're all tired. Yes, we're worn down. But you have to remember the race, if you're still alive and you're a Christian, the race is not over for you. And it's because he has not decided it's time to bring you home. Until then, we need we need to speak up. We need to start standing out. We need to we, we need to be seen. We need to be heard. In our neighborhoods, at the racetrack, um, everywhere. I had a wonderful day yesterday. Didn't do it. It rained in the morning, so I didn't get to do any practicing. My racing was today on Sunday. Spent the afternoon with a friend of mine, hasn't been to the track in 25 years, came up from Toledo. He got to hear my testimony, got to see me being a Christian in action all day. Two other fellas from Grand Rapids, a, a good buddy of mine and his dad came. His dad, before he left, said, Robert, you are a completely different person. Um, I think to believe the word he used was sharp. You are sh sharpened. You are, you are a very sharp fella, complete turnaround. I, he said, I'm blown away. I'm completely impressed. So, And it's not me. It's and There's nothing I could have done myself to, to do anything. It's the blood of Christ. He called me and I came. And it was the blood of Jesus that washed me and changed me and made me a new creation. So um, these it, it, it's just a couple, three verses. Um, I don't know about y'all. I keep telling people I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. And I don't feel I'm being called to preach because I don't really have the education. To tell you the truth, I can't pull right off the top of my head. I can't pull you chapter and verse. I can't. I can't. But every time I look at this book, even in the mornings when I'm sitting at home, I'm having a coffee, it's nice and quiet, I'll ask the Lord for a message, I'll open it up, maybe I get it, maybe I don't. But whatever I read, I start reading it, and it, it suddenly in my mind becomes a sermon. How could I, how can I use this to talk to someone else? And I, I, it's almost like I get lost in the words where he's not so much trying to teach me with these words, but trying to teach me how to teach others with these words. It's absolutely amazing. Our God is, is almighty. He's huge, massive. Uh, there isn't an adjective. There just isn't an adjective. So enjoy your Sunday school and your sermon this morning. Um, God willing. Things that go well today, we'll get in and out of here and get home in time for, for church at 6 o'clock with y'all this evening. And um, that's it. Be blessed. Be a blessing. Share that gift. I love y'all. Finish that race.